glad that y'all are here. Just a couple of reminders. The main one is that um, our masks are going to stay on for the whole service. Uh, we said last week we were going to start a competition and see who can wear theirs the longest. So uh, we just, again, that's our symbol. This is the way we show our neighbors that we love them and that we are caring for them, right? And especially our immunocompromised dear ones who are in the midst of this community. So, uh, so thank you for doing that and thank you for being here to worship this Sunday. I want to invite you now to just take a deep breath in and out. Let's turn our hearts and minds to worship. You are participating in the uh, candle lighting, the Advent wreath. Please come forward. Advent is a time of longing, watching, and praying for God's transformative presence to be ever more vibrantly present in the world. The good news that we strive to live by is that love is stronger than hate, Peace more enduring than war, hope more powerful than despair. And the light of God's love will dispel the shadows cast by violence, suffering, and sorrow until all can deeply know the feeling of joy. Our surprising God is even now, especially now, with us and ready to bring about more hope, more peace, more joy and more love. And today we light the candle of joy. When I look around, I see shadows of sadness, families who have lost loved ones, people in prison, people who are isolated and feel so alone. When I look around, I see shadows of grief, people dreading the holidays because of painful memories, feelings of loss and pain and loneliness. In the face of sadness, we light a candle of joy. In the face of grief, in the face of loss, we light a candle of joy.
day. I don't quite remember the year. I don't quite remember what was going on in my life at the time. But I was just not in a great place. Tired, kind of unsettled, and yes, cold. And it wasn't just one of those days, you know, those days when you don't want to get out of bed, those days when even just putting one foot in front of the other feels exhausting, you know, one of those days. It wasn't just one of those days, no, it had been one of those months. I was out of sorts and tired and crabby, and it was cold. So as I got up that morning, feeling down, feeling low, I was thinking to myself, this has been going on too long, I've got to do something to shake this. I'm in a funk, I'm not happy, this isn't me. And right about now, you all are probably looking back at the bulletin and thinking, wait, isn't this joy something? <laughs> what is this pastor doing, right? I'm getting there. So that morning, that cold out of sorts morning, I remembered this study that I had read a few years before that talked about the health benefits, both mental and physical, of keeping one of those gratitude journals, you know? Taking the time each night to list three gratitudes at the end of the day. And apparently doing that can lower stress, help you sleep better, and even reduce the risk of heart disease. But as I pondered, I realized it wasn't gratitude that I was lacking. It was joy. So I thought, I'm going to do the same thing with joy and see what happens. But three things seemed a little too lofty for the place I was in. So I just went with one, right? One moment of joy each day. And then I would write it down at the end of the day. The day I decided that I needed to do this joy journal thing, coincidentally, a package came in the mail. And it was like this. It was this odd ball that had a sprout sticking out the top of it. And the instructions said, just put it by a window and turn it every day. No water, nothing, just put it by a window and turn it each day. So I did. Each day, I got up and I turned it. And do you know what a full three weeks of my joy calendar was? <laughs> Every single day, my joy was only one thing. Turning this little ball of life and watching it slowly grow into something beautiful. That was it. That was my one little moment of joy, watching my amaryllis grow. If you haven't heard of them, look them up. It's beautiful how they work. And because I'm a pastor, every morning when I woke and turned that amaryllis and saw just another quarter inch had grown without me doing anything really, right? Just turning it. When I saw that a little bit more had grown, a hymn would come into my head. It was this hymn. Morning by morning, new mercies I see. All I have needed, thy hands have provided. Great is thy faithfulness, Lord, unto me. Each day, a couple minutes, I would turn my plant, and eventually I didn't let the hymn get stuck in my head, I would sing. I would sing as I turned it. And by the end of that month, one joy for the day wasn't enough. I added a second. And I kept that joy journal going until I didn't need it anymore. Until life was going, and I was finding and seeking out joy every day, naturally, feeling joy authentically enough that I didn't need to journal about it every night. I was finding joy. Henry Nouwen is a, a great theologian. You may have heard of him. And he once remarked, he said this, joy does not simply happen to us. 
We have to choose joy and keep choosing it every day. That has been my life experience. And I think Mary's song shows us that today too. She chooses joy. Last week we heard about Mary running to Elizabeth in her moment of need and Elizabeth welcoming her with open arms and an open heart. After Mary talks to Elizabeth, in comes our text for today, Mary's song, The Magnificat. What do you say about the Magnificat, right? It is everything. It is radical. It was then and it is now. It's not just beautiful. It is that, but it's more than that too. It is also so theologically rich that we could do an entire series on it. It is jam-packed with faith and with all of the Advent words, hope, peace, joy, and love. And yet joy, you all, has a special role in this song that is often overlooked. Verse 47 says this, and my spirit rejoices in God. But in the Greek, that word for rejoice is special, you all. It's not just your typical rejoicing here. Mary is rejoicing greatly. And even more than that, do you know what it actually means? It's kind of exciting, or at least for nerdy Greek scholars, this is exciting. This word actually comes from two Greek words, the word much and the word jumping. Much jumping is where this word rejoice comes from. So Mary actually is jumping for joy as she sings this song of justice. That's what the Greek is saying here. And that is wild to me, you all. This teenage girl in this scary situation, she has just been told she's going to have this important baby. She runs for help from her family. And after she is welcomed by Elizabeth, she sings. She rejoices. She sings of her faith. She sings of God's justice. She jumps for joy in the midst of all that difficulty and fear and shame that would have been expected for someone in her position in that culture. In the midst of it all, she sings to God and jumps for joy. How did she find joy in the midst of everything she was dealing with? How did that happen? Joy, really? Oftentimes in our culture today, people seem to think joy is frivolous. These are serious times. Joy doesn't make injustice go away. Joy doesn't make loss go away. Joy doesn't make pain disappear. So what's the point? And I hear that, right? In the world, in our country, there are serious things happening right now. There are painful things happening right now. The tornadoes over the weekend, what a tragedy. Oh my gosh, a lot of pain, I get that. So let me be clear here, joy doesn't cure injustice. Joy doesn't make loss go away. Joy won't make pain disappear. Joy won't solve depression. In fact, I'm one of those people who is fond of saying that it's more than okay to need Jesus and a therapist too. <laughs> I'm serious, that's real, okay? I've been there, I get it. So no, joy won't fix everything. We know that. But still, even though we know that as justice seekers or as people who just care deeply about what's happening in the world, we can feel guilty about experiencing joy, can't we? Because we know the places where joy doesn't exist in the world. We know about the oppression happening. We know about the discrimination that is nonstop. We know about the pain and the suffering and the hurt and the hardship that is all around us. We know how hard life can be. We have seen it. Some of us have lived it. And we are fighting for a different way. But sometimes we can get so consumed with the fight that we forget what we are even fighting for. 
And I think joy might be what we're fighting for. Joy might be what we are working towards. Isn't it joy for everyone? Joy that is about liberation and hope and beauty and togetherness and laughter and maybe dancing and enough for everyone always. We can't forget what we're working for with our justice seeking. That's why joy is essential for those of us who consider ourselves seekers of social justice, seekers of a world where everyone is cared for and has enough. As justice seekers, it is essential for us to experience joy so that we remember what we are fighting for. So we remember what we're working towards. And Mary models that for us. Mary, in this context of shame, in the midst of the shock and fear in her situation, she models seeking out joy. She models singing joy into the world. She even models jumping for joy. And when I remember that about Mary, I wonder if it's actually our responsibility as descendants of this tradition of Mary's to claim joy, to take joy when we can, because we are working for a world where joy is actually a human right. And when we are fighting so hard for something, it's important that we live it, that we claim it too. So my hope for all of us today is that we can claim joy, that we will seek it out unapologetically without shame or guilt because joy is essential. And if you aren't ready to jump for joy, I get that. Jumping is a lot, right? I get that. We might not all be there, right? We might not all be there. Remember, I need to keep a joy journal once. And this plant was the only piece of joy for a long time for me. So I get that. I get not feeling joyful. So if you're in that place, I get it. Let me introduce you to my favorite quote about joy. It's from Karl Barth. I've used it every Advent year on Joy Sunday, so you're going to have it memorized pretty soon here, okay? And he says this, Joy is a continual, defiant, nevertheless. I love that. Joy is a continual, defiant, nevertheless. I can get behind that, can't you? Yes, life is full of pain, and nevertheless, we will find joy. Yes, there is tragedy and injustice in the world, in our country, and nevertheless, we will sing of joy. Go back to verse 47, you all. Where is Mary finding her joy? She isn't finding it in the pain and difficulty of life. Mary's spirit is rejoicing in God. You know what, if you can't jump for joy, you go ahead and you think of joy as your continual, defiant, nevertheless. No matter what life brings, we will claim joy. I think there's more than a bit of that in Mary's song, too. Nevertheless, she rejoices. Nevertheless, she prays. Nevertheless, she sings. Nevertheless, she trusts that God is with her. Nevertheless, even with how brutal and painful and scary life can be, nevertheless, she sings of justice and jumps for joy. May we follow in Mary's leaping footsteps, even if it means just doing our best to find one little moment of joy each day. Thanks be to God. Amen. We're going to sing together now. Guess which hymn? <laughs> Joy to the World. All right, number 134. <laughs>
That was a fun one to sing together. All right, go. we're going to turn now to our prayers of the community. So um, I've included some prayers that people have sent in in, in advance of our worship service today, uh, but also I will uh, have a time where we can lift up prayers of our community gathered here. So if you all have a prayer you would like to add, raise your hand and I'll call on you and then I'll repeat it into the microphone, okay? Let's enter into our time of prayer. God of peace, we give you thanks and praise. We thank you that you continually surprise us with your goodness, that you have made a way that we can come into new life and that we can constantly be reshaped into your image and likeness. We thank you for all the blessings of life, for provision and shelter and friendship. We have grown accustomed to making our lives as routine as possible. Yet you shocked and surprised the world and turned it upside down when that baby was born in the manger and made a new covenant with all creation. When you visited the world as one of us and the God who created all things became a part of the creation you so love. So surprise us again. In this holiday season, surprise us. In the ups and downs of life, surprise us. Among those who are sick and hurt, to surprise us, visit us in surprising and unexpected ways. And hear us, O oh God, as we lift up to you the prayers of our hearts that need to be wrapped in your love. We'll respond with, Lord, hear our prayer after each prayer. Healing prayers for physical, emotional, and, spir and spiritual strength for Mary Ann Sullivan. Lord, hear our prayers. Prayers for all of those experiencing homelessness, and particularly those families in Linda Vista who are facing eviction and displacement by a new landlord. Lord, hear our prayers. Prayers for all those suffering from alcoholism and their families. Lord, hear our prayers. Prayers for all those dealing with a cancer diagnosis in their lives, especially Jerry, David, Charlie, Sylvia, Carolyn Tex, her sister, and their families. Lord, hear our prayers. Do you all have any prayers that you would like to offer up in this space this day? Carolyn. For the Keo family who lost their adult son <coughs> last weekend to a car accident, uh, his mother was a surf coach at Pine Loma High School, and they're a big Pine Loma family. What's their last name? Gio. For the Gio family who lost their adult son in a car accident this last week. Lord, hear our prayers. Jim? That was your prayer too. Alright, double that prayer. Yeah. yeah. That, that the children, the grandchildren would be able to stay with their parents. Okay, so prayers uh, in the midst of this loss and prayers of the children uh, will stay with the grandparents. Lord, hear our prayers. Thank you. Yeah, those suffering in the midst of the recent tornadoes. Lord, hear our prayers. Any other prayers? That's okay. So uh, one of Donnie's grandsons is getting married on the 18th, and we're so excited, and uh, they like who he's marrying, and it is a beautiful, joyful thing. So uh, we are grateful for that, and so let us say, Lord, hear our prayers. Any other prayers this day? Together, we know that God hears our prayers even if they are not spoken aloud. And we invite God once again, this God of joy, to surprise us. To help us, O oh God, believe that joy is still possible in our hearts 
in our communities and the world. Help us be those dreamers who believe joy is just around the corner. Help us to seek out little moments of joy in our communities. And God, let your works of grace and love in us be fresh. Renew your calling upon our lives and help us be a part of your hope, your peace, your joy, and your love in ways that we never even could have imagined. Visit us again and do what only you can imagine. Come, O oh come, Emmanuel, and hear us as we say now together the prayer that has been passed down from generation to generation, saying together, our Father, who art in As you all know, we talk about this each week, that um, life is always both and. And so we hold in tension the pain of life with the beauty of life. And so uh, we, together each Sunday, we risk sharing thanksgivings with each other. So sharing aloud with our community something that we are thankful for. So uh, I would just invite you to raise your hand and share something with this community that you are thankful for this day. Joe. I'm grateful that my, my friend and our neighbor, nearby neighbor, is here with me today, Kathy. Kathy, welcome. We're so glad you're here. here. Great. And you have Thanksgiving? Yeah. Yes. Um, I am aware that I'm sitting between two people who have been Uh, think about what you will offer up to God with your lives. 
whether it is a financial offering or a poem or a song or a moment of joy in your week, whatever it is, uh, ponder in your hearts, just like Mary, uh, just something that you will offer up to God. And I just have to intro this song briefly. Lee's going to be singing for us. Um, and Lee, I don't know how to say this because I didn't study this language, but yeah. I text Tommy. There you go. That's what she's going to be singing. Uh, I didn't sing Latin. I'm not Catholic anymore. Uh, but um, here's the translation of that. So you know what she's singing over and over again. It's, and my spirit has exalted in God my Savior. Do you know what verse that is? You might if you listen to the sermon. It's verse 47. Uh, and so we know that it is also translated, my spirit rejoices in God my Savior. And we also know that sort of means now in the Greek, my spirit leaps for joy in God, my Savior. And guess what? We didn't plan that. I didn't know what that Latin meant until this morning. So the spirit is working in our midst. How beautiful is that? All right, friends, freely we have received. So now freely, let us give. Let us collect our morning offering.
and we're reading together A Surprising God by Thomas Long and Daniele McCrae. And so uh, we've had some really beautiful conversations. Pat Shank gives a, a thumbs up, you all. So you know you want to come. It's a thumbs up from Pat Shank. Uh, we had beautiful conversations, and we invite you to come be a part of those conversations. Um, we have our lessons and carols Christmas Eve service, so we just want to be sure you're saving that time in your Christmas plans to come here and uh, worship together. And uh, this hasn't happened in a couple years, so it's kind of exciting. Um, Carol Barrage is opening up her home for her Christmas Eve reception. So everyone's invited uh, over to Carol Barrage's house. The address is here following the Christmas Eve service. We know not everyone may be comfortable with that with COVID right now. Uh, so we just want to say that's okay. If you're not comfortable, then please don't go. Uh, if you are in a place where you feel comfortable doing that, you are invited to come. Um, you all, we're still starting a chime choir, so get excited, okay? The chimes are here. It is very exciting, uh, and we'll be starting it in January, uh, so let us know if you want to join in on that. We've already got a great crew who have said they want to participate in that, so we're looking forward to that. Um, men and women of Westminster, uh, information is in here. Uh, we also have a new addition that um, the Peninsula Shepherd Center needs volunteers. They need volunteers to drive local seniors to doctor's appointments in particular. So if you uh, can drive and uh, have some time in your schedule, this would be a great way to, uh, to help out our community. All right, I think that's all of our announcements. Uh, for this day. So I'm going to invite you now to turn to our charge and benediction. And again, we're going to read the, our charge along, out loud together. Saying together, go out into the world in peace. Have courage. Hold on to what is good. Return no one evil for evil. Support the weak. Help the suffering. Honor all beings. Live love in word and deed. And now may the grace of our Lord Jesus Christ, the love of God, and the binding force of the Holy Spirit be with you all this day and forevermore. Amen. Let's join together in our peace. I invite you to stand. I invite you also to just hold your hands out in front of you. Some people aren't quite more quite comfortable yet holding hands, so hold them out in front of you, and we will uh, sing our peace together. Yeah. 